Hello, my name is Angel Gonzalez, and in this series of lessons, we are going to discuss the bioinformatic approaches for the comparison of biological sequences. First, we are going to discuss the biological background that constitute the base of all mathematical models that we are going to use during these talks. The first is the central dogma of molecular biology. It was first stated by Francis Crick in the 50s. The central dogma of molecular biology is an explanation of the flow of the genetic information within a biological system. The central dogma deals with the detailed residue by residue transfer of sequential information from DNA to RNA to protein. As you can see, there is a connection of biological information contained at the gene level to the protein level, who generally take care of the cellular and biological functions. The second postulate was established by the Nobel Prize Christian Amfinsen. Amfinsen works on the folding of ribonucleases shows a direct connection between the amino acid sequence and the biological active conformation. Amphysen dogma, also known as thermodynamic hypothesis, is a postulate in molecular biology that establishes that the native structure is determined only by the protein amino acid sequence. This implies that a determinate amino acid sequence will always produce a same three-dimensional structure which is essential for the protein function. Here also are a flow of information, in this case from the sequence level to the structural level to the functional level. The third rule is about the connection between the protein sequences and their corresponding structure. Protein sequences change during evolution but their structures tend to be maintained for accomplish the biological function. Here you can see three proteins of different organs that are evolutively related and perform the same biological function. As you can see, the three structures are very similar. However, their sequences are not identical. They tend to differ proportionally to the evolutive distance among them. In this case, the two mammal sequences are closer than a mammal and a chart sequence. Looking at these numbers, we could ask which is the limit for such relation between the sequence similarity and the same three-dimensional structure of a protein. Here we have a graph that displays such a relation. In this graph is plotted pairs of sequence structure alignments. If sequences are similar, they also will have similar three-dimensional structures. On the other hand, for low, lower values of sequence identity, the structures tend to be different. Which is the limit in this case? Well, there is a region about the 20 or 30 percent of identity between sequences, which is known the twilight zone, that the marks the limits between the correspondence between the structure similarity and the sequence similarity. There are three more ch main changes that may occur at any position of a given sequence. These are mutations that could imply, imply a substitution of a nucleotide in a, in a gene sequence and could be uh, uh, bring associated a change of an amino acid at the protein level. 
and the insertion are deletions, that implies the insertion of nucleotides or the remove from the gene sequences. These changes are usually associated with more drastic changes at the protein level. The molecular evolution deals with the balance between the change produced on biological sequences over long periods of time and the conservation of their molecular function of their products. Thus, sequences of present-day organisms are different from those of the ancestors because of the environmental for forces act over the genes and consequently changes are produced. This results in variations between evolutively related genes and proteins. These changes improve the adaptation of the protein to the new surrounding conditions. Thus, when we look at alignment of sequences, we are looking at the history of them, the changes that were produced over the time. Summarizing, so far we have seen the fundamental relation between the sequences, the structure, the function, and the evolutionary origin of biological sequences. So, if we know that two sequences are similar, we can make a hypothesis about their common evolutionary origin, biological function, or three-dimensional structure. Now let's go to discuss some basic terminology that we are going to use during these lectures in order to establish a common language. Sequence similarity is defined as a quantitative measure of the degree of relationship between two sequences. And this is based on the combination of identity and conservation. Sequence homology is an hypothesis based on the analysis of, two, of an optimal alignment between two or more sequences and their similarity values. Implies a, an, an evolutionary relationship between the sequences and is produced by an speciation event or a duplication event. Orthologous sequences are produced by speciation events. They are descendants from a common ancestor and they generally have similar three-dimensional structure and the mind composition and generally perform the same biological functions. Parallelous are descendants from a common ancestor separated by the duplication event. So it's a modification of pre-existing genes to perform new molecular functions. Parallel genes often belong to the same species. It is worth to make a distinction between homology and similarity. Homology is an statement or a hypothesis about the evolutionary relationship between biological sequences. It means that two or more sequences have a common ancestor. On the contrary, similarity is a number. It simply means that two sequences are similar by some criteria. Use of sequence alignments. Why sequence alignments are important? Well, this technique is very important to resolve many important biological questions. As we previously discussed, the comparison between sequences could lead to saying some biological proposals based on the relation between the sequences, the structure, the function, and the evolutive origin. But for we compare sequence, we need to define a metric to evaluate if these two sequences are similar or not. It is clear that we can align two sequences in several ways. So which is the relevant? 
For this, we need to evaluate numerically each alignment, a process known as score, scoring the alignment. For the numerical evaluation of the alignment, we need to take into account all operational changes occurring between the sequences. These were previously defined as substitutions, that is the replacement of one element of the sequence by a different element, the insertions, that, the, that is the addition of one or more elements in a region of the sequence, or deletions, that is the loss of, of more elements in a region of the sequence. Here we have an example of substitution or insertion or deletion. So we need to define a numerical value for each such changes. And once we have defined, we can use to compare both sequences and assign a total value or a score for the comparison result. Suppose that we have an arbitrary schema for penalized matches, mismatches, or insertion of deletions between the two sequences. If we apply the general formula of the score, we have that the score is the value of the, each of the elements by the number of times that it appears in the alignment. As you can see, mismatches and indels have negative values. because they represent difference between the sequences. As more difference between the sequences we are observe, they become more distant and their score will be lower. Let's take an example of an evaluation between alignment using a predefined values for account for match, mismatch and gaps. This is the computation of the score according to the general formula described previously. And as we can see for the first sequences, we have the value of, of the match multiplied by the number of matches. In this case, there are only four. Then the value of the mismatch by the number of mismatches, 18, and the value of the insertion or deletion by the number. In this case, there is no insertion or deletion. The same for the two other alignments. When we compare these scores, we obtain that the last alignment will be the, the better for representing the relation between these two sequences. In the previous example, you use an arbitrary score for the, the representation of changes between two sequences. But chemical rules of biology could be represented in a more detail using a mathematical formulation to account better for the actual changes. There are changes that occur more often than others. Let's take an example of the DNA molecule. In DNA, substitution mutations are of two types transitions and transversions. Transitions are interchange of two ring or one ring bases. These involve minor chemical changes between bases of similar shape. Thus, they are very frequent. On the other hand, we have the transversions who are interchanged between one ring and two ring bases. These changes involve more drastic chemical modification and consequently are produced or accept from an evolutive point of view less frequent. So, if we're going to define and a score uh, um, function for the 
type of changes that we observe in the DNA molecule, we can describe three, type, three main types of changes. A high score for a match that will be represented in the diagonal of this table. A lower score for the mismatch that implies transition and a more lower score for the transmission that is less probable to occur. Now let's go to talk about amino acids and proteins and how we could establish a matrix for measure the substitution rates about amino acids. In the case of proteins, the things are more complicated than for DNA sequences. Proteins are poly polypeptides composed by 20 amino acids with different chemical properties. However, these amino acids can also be clustered, attending to the shared properties between them. So we can group amino acids based on their physicochemical properties, like hydrophobicity, aromaticity, charge, size of pore character. Here is a uh, Venn diagram representation of the clustering of amino acids attending to these physicochemical characteristics. This common feature shared by some amino acids imply that some changes will occur more naturally than others. For example, the change of one amino acid for another with the same size and physical chemical properties is more likely to be selected than its replacement by another with different properties. Here is a representation of some pattern substitution in proteins to illustrate this point. As you can see in the protein, in the protein core, we encounter, we ca we encounter many amino acids of the type hydrophobic or small. So changes in this region of the protein will involve amino acids with the same characteristics. On the other side, in the, in, in the protein surface, amino acids that are most probably to be here are ch the, of the type ch charge or polar, because proteins are in, clo in close contact with water, that is a polar environment. So changes between in this region of the proteins will involve more residues with the same properties. Here we display different amino acids and their relationships based on their properties. Aspartate and glutamate are both negatively charged and they, dis and they conserve many physical chemical properties. On the contrary, arginine, a positive charge residue, and phenylalanine, an aromatic residue, they display different physical chemical properties. So in proteins, we're going to observe a larger number of changes of amino acids with simi similar physical chemical properties. These are named conservative substitution because they preserve the, the function and, it, and are more likely to be selected. For the evaluation of the differential patterns of substitutions observed in protein sequences, we use the substitution matrices. These matrices 
describe the rate at which one character in a sequence changes to other character states over the time. For doing this calculation, we use an alignment of related sequences and we calculate the probability of interchange of individual amino acids among them. Let's see an, an example of how these matrices are built. First, we have to, constru uh, to construct a transition count table for the changes observed between sequences. In this example, we will focus in one column of the alignment to calculate all, possi all possible transitions. We start on the first sequence and we start to count how many times it is changed by other amino acids. In the case of glycine, one, two, three times is changed by glycine, one, two times is changed by tryptophan, and one time is changed by asparagine. Once we have counted the change of the first amino acid to all others, we move to the next sequence and repeat the process. The same from the third sequence and change with the others. until the last sequence that is not counted because it was already included in all previous calculations. So the, the transition count, count table for the last sequences is always zero. Now we zoom all the transitions observed in a column and jump to the next column and repeat the process until we reach the end of the line. These are the totals number of transition in this column thus for one column of the alignment we can calculate the ratio of occurrence of each amino acid combination in the observed data and also in the, ran the random occurrence of every pair in the column this is computed as an observed and expected probabilities. In this case, the observed probability for a transition from G to W is A times divided by the total number of transitions. For the expect probability, it's simple, the individual probability of each of the amino acids to be compared. Once we have the observed probability and expect probability calculated, we can compute a not odd ratio between the observation and the rate and the random noise. This ratio could be transformed in a logarithmic scale to measure the ratio of the likelihood of two amino acids appearing with a biological sense and the likelihood of the same amino acids appearing by chance. So when we apply the logarithmic transformation to the observed over divided by the expected frequency, we could have a positive score to the more likely substitutions a negative score for the less likely substitutions and a zero score for a neutral situation when the observed and random frequencies are equivalent. Here we have a substitution matrix for amino acids calculated in the, uh, as the method described before. As you can see, it is a symmetrical matrix of 20 by 20 amino acids 
and the corresponding score for each of these changes of substitutions among each pair. The matrix has positive and negative values, representing how often a determinate amino acid change is produced. If amino acids share similar chemical properties, they will be replaced more often than, and the score will be positive. This is the case for tyrosine and phenylalanine, both aromatics residues, or valine or isoleucine, both hydrophobic residues approximately the same size. On the contrary, for change of amino acid with different properties, the change will be less frequent. This is the case for leucine, that is a hydrophobic amino acid, and asp aspartic acid, which is a negative uh, charge amino acid. Now that we have represent the relation of uh, the, 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 the transition between amino acids, we could simply calculate the score of every alignment using a substitution matrix. This is an example of an alignment between two sequences and the calculation of the score using this matrix. We go, we go to see the correspondence, problem with problem, go to the table, put the score and the same for the rest of amino acids changes. Now we have a matrix that represents better the chemical changes that occur within proteins. The substitution matrices are the base of every single alignment program. They are different according to the type of metrics and data set used in their construction. The most simple is the identity matrix, which only considers a positive score for a coincidence of amino acid a zero value for, and a zero value for any other relation. The application of this matrix is very limited for amino acid sequences because the obvious difference between amino acids. However, it's relatively commonly used for nucleotide sequences. Another very popular matrix for protein sequences is the PAM matrices. It was the, one of the first matrices developed for protein sequences in the, and, and, uh, by Margaret Dayhoff in the, in the 70s. And it used for the construction alignments of closely related proteins with high level of sequence identity. Clearly, when we compare sequences, they could differ by more, by more than one percentage. Thus, a transformation of the matrix to account, to account for increasing difference between distant and related sequences has to be done. The PAM1 matrix is used as the basis for calculating all other, other matrices by assuming that repeat mutation would follow the same pattern as, as those in PAM1 matrix, and multiple substitution can occur at the same site. Thus, the underlying mutation data can be extrapolated to other palm distances to produce a family of matrices. This is a family of palm matrices. Matrices construct from lower palm values can be used if the sequence have greater degree of similarity. 
when we when aligning sequences that are highly divergent, best results are obtained at higher path values. The second and commonly used matrix is the Blossom series of matrices. Blossom matrices were developed by Stephen and Georgia Hennikoff using multiple sequence alignment of conserved regions named blocks in evolutionary divergent proteins. They, were co they, they construct the, the matrix in a similar fashion as PAM matrices, but made use a different strategy for estimating targeted frequencies. In this case, the proteins to compare were distantly related and only one portion of the protein is concerned. The scores were calculated from data of highly conserved sequence segments for different proteins rather than data based on very similar sequences as the PAM matrices. So, as with the PAM model, there is a number series of blossom matrices, but the number in this case refers to the maximum level of identity of the sequences used for estimated frequencies. Here we have an example for the Blossom 62 matrix. The threshold was set at 62%. Hence, fire's frequencies were only counted between segments less than 62% identical. In this case, a difference of matrix, a, a different with the PAM matrix, lower Blossom values means sequences more divergent and higher blossom values means sequences more closer. So, if we want to compare the blossom versus the PAM matrices, we could say that they are the most used protein substitution matrices that PAN assumes an evolutionary model with constant rate of changes, whereas Blossom generates the data by direct observation rather than extrapolation, that Blossom matrices usually perform better than PAN matrices for local and similarity searches, and the rule is that when we compare close related proteins, which we want to use lower PAN or high Blossom matrices. And for distantly related proteins, we should use higher PAM or lower blossom matrices. Here, there is some selection criteria for the use of substitution matrices. For short alignment of very similar sequences, a lower PAM or a higher blossom matrix. For large alignment of divergent sequences, a larger PAM or a lo lower blossom matrix. It is uh, worth to mention that the amino acid substitution matrices are biased by the composition of the data set used for the estimation of the substitution frequencies. It is known that the evolutionary sele selection pressure that governs the, con the conservation and relative mutability of amino acids varies among protein families. And as a consequence, the application of a standard matrix for the alignment of a determined protein family could give inaccurate results, especially if the amino acid composition differs from those used for the matrix construction. Thus, a specific substitution matrix for a certain family of protein are continuously developing. And here I put Two examples of different substitution matrix made with different data sets of amino acid sequences. Now we are going to discuss the insertion and deletions and how to deal with the gap 
penalty score. So far we have been working in the description of the substitution for nucleic acid bases and amino acid. But there are also other changes that could occur between sequences, like insertion and deletions. These events are associated to the gain or loss of one or group of characters in the sequences. The notion of a gap in an alignment is an important in many biological applications, since, since the insertion or, of, or, delete, or deletions comprise an entire subsequence and often occur from a single mutation of event. The absolute, the absolute rate of indels in most known genomes, including humans, tend to be markedly lower than simple substitutions, but when they occur, are associated to more drastic changes in the sequences to compare. Thus, it's desirable to allow some gaps to be introduced into an alignment to compensate to compensate for insect insertions and deletions that occur within the sequences to compare. This is accomplished by deducting some amount from the alignment score for each gap introduced. Although the, a number of strategies have been proposed for penalizing gaps, the most common formulation, known, known as a thin gap penalties, involves a fixed deduction for introducing a gap plus an additional deduction proportional to the length of the gap. This is a linear function of introducing gap and this is the affine, affine gap penalty score. The rationale for this is that insertion and deletion events are rare, but when they occur Several adjacent residues may be involved. What does it mean? For instance, it is known that in protein sequences, non structural regions and interdomain connections accumulate large levels of insertion and deletions. So, an alignment of this type will be more biologically meaningful than alignment of this type. So if we inc introduce this smooth function, we favor the obtention of alignment of these types, which are more, more biological significant. Let's going to see uh, an example of different alignments using a linear or uh, an affine gap penalty function. In the first scheme, we are only uh, only use a single value for gap. So if we compute the score of these sequences, they will be they will have the same similar score. However, if we modify the input conditions and introduce a value for the gap extension, we could see that here in this sequence, the gap is penalized different, the insertion and the extension of the gap, and the scores of the two sequences will increase, and will be different from the original scores. Gap penalty values are not possible to estimate from probability data, as the case of substitution uh, uh, matrices. So they are usually calibrated according to the substitution matrix used. And here is some selection criteria for the use of gap penalty in database, in database searching according to the substitution matrix employed. Most of the time, these values are included in the default parameters in sequence alignment and database search protocols. Here we have some general recommendations for the use of substitution matrix, matrices and gap penalties. For any specific study, you will probably need to modify some of these parameters to achieve more accuracy in the result.
Finally, we're going to discuss a very simple method for aligning two sequences. In this case, the dot plot methods. Dot plots are a graphical method that allows the comparison of two biological sequences and identify regions of close similarity between them. It's an array of points of the chart obtained row column where the sequence A is plotted in the rows and the sequence B is plotted in the columns. Then you mark the coincident points between sequences and try to obtain a consecutive diagonal of matches that could represent the identity between the sequences. Here we have an example of a dot plot of uh, the comparison of a sequence with itself. As you can see, for large sequences, this plot could be very noisy, with many points. So, generally, it's better to establish a window of consecutive matches to clarify the view. Here, if we use mark as thread with at least two consecutive matches, we could clearly see that the two sequences are the same, a perfect diagonal. If there is a mutation of one amino acid, you observe a rupture in the diagonal. If there are one deletion, you observe a relative displacement of the diagonal. The displacement of the diagonal is proportional to the size of the insertion or deletion. Now, we're going to continue with a practical exercise of this lesson corresponding to the visualization and interpretation of sequence comparison using the plots.